All right, so uh, starting off with, we have a Silver Mercy player. Um, really quick about your team comp. Um, so your second healer on your team is Zenyatta, which means that you as Mercy are going to be full as the main healer, as Zen is pretty much strictly an off healer. Um, if you were running something with like a Moira or an Ana, a Bap, or even a Brig, really, uh, because you have two Brawl tanks, you could consider yourself kind of um, flex support or the off healer. Um, and the difference in being a main support or a flex support as Mercy comes into who prioritize pocketing. Um, so Mercy, as you know, can only heal, uh, aside from her ult, can only heal or damage boost one target at a time. When you're playing main healer, your priority should be on your front line, on your tanks. Um, if you're running something like a Moira, Brig, Bap, or something else, or another support that could be considered a main support or main healer, then you, as an off healer, are better spent your time uh, pocketing DPS, damage boosting your DPS. So Widow is fantastic, Ash is really good for that. Um, be careful with damage boosting Genji. Definitely if he blades, you want to get uh, damage boost him because that extra 30% is pretty significant. Um, but yeah, so here, your job as Mercy, uh, you are the main support, so your primary focus should be on your tanks. Again, always, because Mercy has very good mobility, you always have to keep an eye on the rest of your team, but definitely be focusing on the tanks here. You need a team. One. Attack commencing. Damage increase. Just the widow, I like it. So, right there, uh... Let's see if we can... One. Attack commencing. So right off the gate, you want a damage boost, which is good. You do that, right? You damage boost the Widow. And then as Widow goes for a weird hook shot, you go to your Zen. So Zen is also a good target to damage boost, especially if he's charging up a right click, because that burst damage is actually pretty significant. Zen can do a lot of damage. But here, definitely just uh, damage boost your Widow, because she's going for a jump shot. She's going for a hook shot. So she has... Um, a good opportunity to get a pick, and again, that extra thirty percent damage boost from your uh, from your damage boost means that she does not necessarily have to land that headshot to kill someone. She can land a body shot on someone, um, you know, like their Anna. She could kill without, uh, or even their Bap, uh, their Ash, Genji, really anyone other than their tanks. But uh, yeah, Zen's not a bad target to choose as a damage boost target, but definitely. In this particular situation, you want to be prioritizing your Widow because she has the best chance at securing a kill. Um, your Zen right here is probably just charging up to shoot at a barrier or something like that because they are running Ryan Zarya, so they're probably sitting up there with shields. And their Baptiste just used Lamp. Never, never do this. Lamp is such a valuable cooldown. If you ever play Lamp, like or ever play Bap, that's just a an awful use of Lamp sure you guys have a widow but they don't even know that just dropped it off to start is there Reinhardt whatever back to the game let's get you back out there So, a little bit there. Uh, that wasn't bad. You know, you were um, looking around a lot, which is good. You were uh, switching your beam targets uh, fairly effectively. Uh, there were a couple of times where you were healing full health targets, but you were uh, generally you were good at listening for that sound cue, that little ding when uh, you heal someone to full health, and you you switched pretty quickly afterwards. But um, you know, uh, as often as you can, like that 30% damage boost is absolutely massive, and you can get a lot done with that. Um, so never underestimate that. Uh, as Mercy, you know, some of the things that you have to consider is that there might be times where it's worthwhile letting a teammate die um, and focusing on damage boosting instead to secure those final few kills. You know, because if you let one tank die, but you're damage boosting, um, 
your Genji through his ultimate, sure, you lose you lose right or you know you lose your main tank, you lose Ryan, but Genji, because of your damage boost, pops off and kills four people. Well then you're up from the fight and you win that, right? Um But yeah, no, so, so that was okay. Um the big thing here with this res is that you have a Ryan and a Zarya. So and you are facing off against um an Ash, a Genji, a Baptiste, an Anna, all people that can punish you when you go in for this res. So when you ever go for a res like this, always say, hey Zarya, can I get a bubble? Or Ryan, can you shield me? Uh something like that. I can go for this res. Even if you have a Roadhog, just say, hey Road, can you body block me for a sec? Because like, you know, Roadhog has six hundred health. They're not gonna be able to kill him very easily. Um, give some kind of cover for this res. So, res actually has a deceptively long... So you could probably have been right about here and made this res. And by standing here, you, just, you cut off angles to this high ground. So, again, if their Ash was still alive and sitting right here, easy, easy headshot on you because you're a standing still target. You hug this side right here, you can still reach that res, and then you back up just a little bit, they can't see you. Little things like that, it's just a little a little positioning thing, but you always want to make sure you are in an, a safe spot. Like, again, you know, their Ash is dead, and, um, you know, their McCree, or their, uh, their Genji, or whatever, isn't really paying attention. No one's really looking at you, so you're safe, but always try to get a res off behind cover. Always ask your team for some support, or some help, because, again, when you go for that res, you are um, a very, very easy target to hit. Good res. So, right there, you flew up to your Genji, and it looks like you uh, you didn't fly all the way to him, which is good. Um, and then you kind of just slowly glided down here. Because you're in a dangerous spot when you flew to your Genji, I would just let yourself drop. Like, very quickly, minimize line of sight, just get out of there, get out of danger as quickly as you can. Um, so flying back over here was okay, you know, because you're back behind a corner, but don't glide down when you're in a spot like this. Just let yourself drop and try to get behind a corner, try to get back to safety as quickly as possible. You should be at peak performance. Damage boost on the Genji. I like it. Don't stop now. Oh, that was good. You needed a doctor. Team is at full health, so you pocketed yeah, the Genji and got some kills. Oh, very good. Pop your Genji. Yep. Nice super jump. Not really needed, but it's, it's a very handy ability to get out of danger. Let's get you back. So, I'm going to say something right here about uh, this kind of thing doesn't happen in Silver, but right here, as Mercy, it's not your job to be card pitch. It's Zen's job. Um, so, again, this kind of team coordination does not happen in Silver. It almost never happens in Gold. It sometimes happens in Platinum. But what you should be doing is pushing up with your tanks, right? Um, so what your Reinhardt doing... What your Reinhardt is doing is good, right? Your Reinhardt is pushing forward. Your Reinhardt is chasing down a stagger, like their Anna, who is staggering. He is trying to secure that kill. That is good, right? That is the right play. Um, however, he is probably going to die because he is anteed and on low health. Your Zen should be the one on cart. Again, because he's got ranged healing, because he's got ranged damage, everything he can do is at range. So he is the one character on your team that can sit on cart and still provide consistent value to your team. Um, so you and your Zarya uh, should be up here with them. Um, your Widow is up here too, so actually might be okay. Uh, Widow might be able to secure that kill before Reinhardt dies. Genji's pushing up. But, um, again, I know somebody has to be pushing cart and you were the one here, but just as as Mercy, that is rarely a job, right? That's... Uh, Usually the Zen or the Anna. Yeah. Reinhardt got slept, so Reinhardt might die. 
good. Drop up the Damage boost. Down, yep. Why up? No one can hide from my sight. Um, don't bother shooting the Genji there, like you're, you know, your pistol does okay damage, but you're just going to get more value from your team if you, like, damage boost your Zarya, and your Zarya tries to hit the Genji, it's a lot easier for Zarya to shoot a Genji than it is for you, or, you know, same thing with your Reinhardt, no, actually it's probably better for your damage boost your Zarya through that, because Zarya's beam does not... Uh, care about Genji's deflect, where if Ryan's swings, uh, they, they can't get deflect, because deflect actually cancels out melee attacks as well. Um, here. Let's see. So, you, here, your Reinhardt still has armor. So, that means he still has some damage reducing stuff, uh, properties to his health. I would focus more on damage boosting him here. So, yes, he doesn't have full HP, but you, as Mercy, don't necessarily need to keep him at full HP. Um, so as a support, you are not just a heal bot, right? You are an enabler for your team. You, it is your job to enable your team to do the things that they want to do. So that's a really weird way. And I'm, I'm, that's a very bad way of explaining it, but as mercy, you can either heal or you can damage boost. And in this case, um, you know, your Reinhardt's chasing down a Zarya. This Zarya is in a bad position, and unless she has self-bubble, um, she is not getting away from this Reinhardt. Um, she's not even turning to look at him right now, so right now your Reinhardt's really no, in no danger of being attacked. Even if he was, you know, she's not glowing, so she's not at very high charge, so she doesn't do a whole lot of damage. So, damage boost your Reinhardt here, you know, and that way his, um, his, uh, swings will do, is it, uh, like almost a hundred damage per swing, and so he can kill her in three, maybe four swings if she's at full health, instead of five or six. Um, you know, and it's it's one of those things that's just going to help burn her down faster. You're going to build Ryan's ult faster. You get ult charge off that, and then you can heal him when he's uh, lower on health and in danger. But um, I would say in this particular situation, securing the kill on the Zarya is a um, a bigger priority than healing your Ryan because he is. Pretty much at full health, right? And he still has armor. You also have uh, Valkyrie here, so I'm interested to see how you use that. Okay, so Zen pops trans there. I'm not too sure why. Um, you know, they do have a Genji. So Trans is one of the better counters to Genji Blade. Um, they also have Zarya, so you know Grav uh, Transcendence counters Grav pretty decently. I, I think your Zen's trying to be aggressive, trying to tell your tanks to play aggressive with this, which isn't terrible, but there are better uses of Transcendence than what he did here. That's pretty questionable. Um, again, you're turning on to shoot at Genji. Uh, there's no one really looking at you, but at this point you say, hey, Ryan, there's a Genji behind us, can you turn around and swing on him? And then you damage boost him, and he's discorded, and that's two swings, or a swing and a fire strike, and this Genji is dead. Right? Um, it's just, it's... You know, tell your hey, Ryan, turn around, Genji on cart, and then damage boost your Ryan against the discorded Zenyatta. <laughs> Check out this gun. I'm going for the tournament. What are you going to do? My strength unleashed. So this is dangerous. Um, I needed a doctor. So, you know, right here, your Zarya just died. Um, a lot of your team has died or is just respawning. 
right? So you are now fighting a weird, staggered 3v6, right? You're pocketing uh, your Widow, your Ryan's down here on cart by himself, uh, your Zen's still in spawn, he just respawned, your Zarya just died. At this point, because you guys are so staggered, you, somebody on your team, should be calling for... Because you cannot go into a 3v5 situation and expect to win. It's uh, it's just not going to happen. Um, So what I would do here is, instead of flying up to your Widow, or, I mean, you could fly to your Widow and stay there and heal, but just tell your Widow to back the fuck up, to get out. Um, You know, your Widow's now facing off against an Ash, she's on fire, you've got a Genji up top here who's... He's looking to dash right into this door and mess up your day. So... The the play there was to was to just say uh, regroup back at spawn, right? Have your widow grapple out. You could fly to her, and grapple up here, something. But uh, taking this fight was not the optimal play from a team perspective. Yeah, Genji dashed in on you. Just drop. Okay, so your Zen switched off to Ana. So now you have a, a another hero that is considered a primary support or a main healer. So now as Mercy, you can switch your focus onto enabling your DPS as opposed to keeping your tank line alive. Because Anna is much better at keeping tanks alive than you. So that's where, where I talked about, you know, kind of focusing on damage boosting your, um, your DPS. Especially now that you have Pharah too. So, you know, classic pharmacy is terrifying. At, especially at low elos. I remember the that would be a good time to ult. So Mercy's ult is a great ult to engage in a fight. Um, again, Mercy's healing has been nerfed pretty hard, so it's not necessarily the best for sustain. So, you know, if you guys get grabbed or shattered, it's not a good idea to pop your ult because you just don't do enough healing um, to sustain through that kind of big damage. But a good use of Valkyrie is to engage with it. So when you guys do your soft reset, kind of like you guys did here, um, you can ult and then just start damage boosting everybody, right? And it does that little chain damage boost. You guys can walk in and, um, and just lay the beat down on everything. You know, when you have five people... Focusing down one or two targets at a time, and uh, you know, with a thirty percent damage boost, things die. So it's a good ult to initiate team fights. But I mean, you know, the team fight was already won there, so you didn't necessarily even need it. Let's keep it moving. Let's go, Genji. So, you have held on to Valkyrie pretty long. Um, don't be afraid to use it. Again, uh, Mercy's ult builds relatively quickly. That was a very dangerous res to take because it was right in front of Bob. Uh, Reinhardt saved you. Had to charge Bob. Probably would have died. No Let me get you there's a Genji in your back. I don't think Maze should be allowed to teabag. A little bit of a dangerous guardian angel there, uh, went on the shield. It wasn't needed. Uh, you didn't need to fly any closer to the fight. Damage boost, damage boost, damage boost. Yes. So So 
Valkyrie here. Valkyrie, which is good. You can probably little some parkour with her, as I said. But, uh, Valk here is good. This is an okay Valkyrie. Um, right here. Look at your team. Right, so you are healing your Mei primarily, but she's at full health. Um, your Reinhardt, your Zarya, all at full health. Right now, you should be damage boosting. Um, everybody's at full health or even very close to full health, so your damage boost just gets so much more value than healing up that last little 5 or 10 hit points on, on May right there. So definitely pop your beam over to your Reinhardt, who's swinging on Zarya, and damage boost. And then you're going to get damage boost on your Reinhardt and your Zarya, and if you know they both pick the same target, that target is going to die very quickly. Um, I'll forget about Mercy's damage boost. Healing health for all sorts. There's nothing you could have done to save him another cat out heal Genji Blade for the good voice. So again, you know, you're you're focusing on healing as opposed to damage boosting. Because you have an Ana, um healing does not need to be the first thing on your mind. It does not have to be your utmost priority. Um, this is one of those times where I was saying that it's sometimes it's okay to let a tank die if you damage boost through and secure a kill. And even right here, you know, your Reinhardt's almost at full health, and he is the only one who's really in danger of dying. He's the only one who's at low health. So, or who's not even at full health. He still has armor. He still has a lot of health left. Um, and so damage boosting here is still the right play. Like, you could have damage boosted your way through this entire Valkyrie. And, I mean, you guys still win the team fight, but you might have been able to do it uh, a little bit faster. Shatter not needed there, um, and it was wasted. Into the iris. Heal your right, heal your right. So there, uh, you had res off cooldown, and you decided to try and shoot the Ash instead of resing the May. Um, you know, especially because no one was even looking at you, you would have gotten that res off, res, uh, gotten May back up, and then you would have six people on this fight instead of five. So even if you did get the kill on the on the Ash, um, you know, resing the May was just the better option. Because I mean, your entire team was focusing that down that Ash. She was going to die no matter what. So your play, like your couple of bullets you fired, did not add value to this fight. Um, if you had res that May, that is huge value, because all of a sudden you have a May on your team, and May is a very frustrating character. Yeah, you guys win it anyway, but... Little, little decision-making things like that are going to be the difference between silver and gold, gold and plat. Three to zero. Switching sides. Okay, so biggest takeaways from that first round. Um, it was pretty good. You know, positionally, uh, you play okay. Um, you know, you're back from the team fight. Uh, you can do, you know, you know how to do uh, Mercy Super Jump, so you at least know the, um, the little bit of Mercy tech there is. Um... I'd like to see you play a little a little more around corners. You know, you tend to be a little bit out in the open, but that's, for the most part, positionally, it's okay. Um, Decision-making-wise, yeah, you can pull out your pistol a couple times, and yeah, you know what, there are some situations where you can pull out your pistol, but for the most part, you provide so much more value to your team, either damage boosting or healing, um, just because... There are other characters that can do damage more consistently, easier than you can. I'll be busy soon enough. Healing stream engaged. So now you have a BAP as well, so you're playing the Bastion Bunker, classic Bastion Bunker. So yeah, your primary objective is damage boosting the Bastion. One. Attackers incoming. Stop the payload. Be careful out there. So far, so good. Still damage boost the Bastion, you know, little bits like that. Uh, Baptiste can heal. Up and right. Let me 
get you patched up. Damage boost engaged. You needed a doctor? Yep, this is good so far. I think right now, with you guys who won the team fight, you're Ryan, you're sorry, everybody needs to get back up on high ground. Oh no. Yeah, everybody should have retreated back to high ground. You guys have time. Uh, definitely want to stay on that high ground. Optimal positioning, especially for this kind of combat. I'm even stronger. So you can walk in your bastion through that. Big ults like bastion ult, soldier ult, uh, Genji ult, those are all things that you can damage boost them through. And it is very worthwhile, especially if you have a Baptiste or another main healer. For you to just pocket that DPS here. Genji blades. Uh, so, just to continue what I was saying there, those big DPS ults, like I said, Soldier, even McCree, um, Soldier, Bob, Genji, Bastion, things like that, definitely damage boost them through that. You know, especially when you have another primary healer. Um, get, again, a lot of value. You're going to hear me say that a lot. Um, value. Especially as a support, you know, you have to think you're not just a heal bot, right? Um, you have other parts to your kit, and if you don't utilize everything in your kit, you are not playing hero to the full effectiveness. And Mercy's other part to her kit, aside from res, is her damage boost, right? And it's those little things where, you know, if you're damage boosting a DPS character through your ultimate, or, you know, even damage boosting Ryan as he swings through his own shatter. Just gonna kill things a little bit faster. You're gonna win the team fight faster. Um, it's it's good value. Um, and then right there, you know, uh, yeah, you just you decided to one v one a Genji instead of sticking around cover. So, uh, you know, you know they have a widow, right? You can see that. So when they have a widow, you as Mercy and Bap, you guys have to play a little. Conservatively, you have to try and find Hello. cover, try and anticipate where that uh, widow is going to be, so you're not within immediate sight lines. Um, so it was just a little bit of a positioning error. Just to Genji instead of staying, uh, playing safe. So here. That would have been a good spot to Valk. You know, um, Zarya got a huge grab off, um, so it definitely would have been worthwhile to combo uh, Valkyrie with that, because you can Valkyrie and then damage boost both your Reinhardt and your Zarya into their grab, and you just do an absurd amount of damage. And yes, they used Lamp, so I mean, if you don't shoot Lamp down, they're, they're still going to take a lot of damage. They're all going to be at 40 health, and then a damaged boosted Rhine just obliterates anything, right? It's... That would have been a good time to use Let me show you I'm taking care of you. Super shot. This is the dangerous position to be in, as much as have a widow. Don't try 1v1 a bath until your DPS is rest of the widow. So. So we heard and identified that there was a Baptiste off to the left, which is good. Here you are in bad position. Um, higher ranks, that Anna, that Bap, they're gonna see you. This Diva's gonna dive you, and then you're just gonna die. There's, there's nothing. There. So it's bad position, to be in. but you fly back, which is good. 
about. So right there, what I would be saying is, hey, Bastion, there's Baptiste on the left, right? And then you just damage boost ba uh, Bastion into the Baptiste, and that Baptiste is going to die in less than a second. Right? And then you... So then here, you know, you make the decision to try and go 1v1 this Baptiste instead of helping your team against a Genji. Right. So your team didn't really need the help there, and you got the kill, but right, you could have been with your Bastion, they could have killed that Genji sooner, and then you could have just sat right here and res your Widow. Right, and you would have been safe behind cover, and you could have kept your Widow in this fight. Now she was Bastion through this. Her mind's at full health, you don't need to heal. Now she was Bastion, but Bastion. Heroes never die! Stay in the immortality field. Okay, now back up. So Genji was smart to dump the uh, immortality field. So, when they have a Widow and you're Valking, so a Valking Mercy is very tough to hit. Um, so, you, you know, even for Widows, but every once in a while you're going to come across a Widow, even in gold, with some god tier aim. Well, people have it in their minds that, oh, if I just get good aim, I'm going to climb. You're not entirely wrong, but you're also going to, you know, hit this skill ceiling. And so, occasionally in gold, you'll meet these Widows that have absolutely remarkable aim. Uh, it happens a lot in Platinum, especially in High Platinum when you start to hit that 28, 2900 mark. Uh, you'll find some people with some really, really good aim. And as Mercy, when you're just you're flying up in the open here, sure, you might be pretty hard to hit and a little unpredictable, but you know, um, Widow can still one-shot you. Right? So whenever they have a Widow, always assume she has good aim and give her the respect she deserves. right? And so as, as Mercy, you can be kind of around this corner here and still uh, damage boosting, healing your team. Uh, always stay moving, right? Never stay in one spot. Always keep moving. Hard to hit, be hard to predict. Um, just cover, that kind of thing. Ready to I know you're trying to get to help your team, but that was kind of a risky spot to guardian angel too. <laughs> So, one interesting thing on a little bit of Mercy Tech, in the same way um, that you use Crouch and Guardian Angel to super jump, you can Crouch and Guardian Angel and kind of glide along the ground and get through doors. So right there, you know, you just use Guardian Angel and you kind of uh, hit the roof here. If you had crouched first and then Guardian Angeled, you have like slid along the ground and you can make it through doors that way without hitting the roof. Some Mercy Tech. It's the, the exact same motion as Super Jump. I've seen you Super Jump, so you know how to do it. But uh, you can use that to get through doors without hitting the ceiling. Now this is... Um... <laughs> Mercy is not a frontline fighter. She is not a DPS. Um, so dropping down there and pulling out your pistol was the wrong play. Um, so they're all pushing cart. What your team should be doing is instead of dropping down behind them, um, because you know you're that's Zarya, Baptiste, and Widow dropping down behind them. The only one who I could see dropping down back here would be Widow, because she can just get back up and get away. The rest of you guys should be pushing back through here and grouping up with your Reinhardt. Right? Should be coming this way. It is the safer play, it is the better play, because at higher ranks, when you guys drop down here, you know, when you start shooting, somebody's going to realize there's a mercy behind them, and then Widow's going to, or, you know, Anna, Reinhardt, Diva, they're all going to turn around and look, oh, look, there's, you know, a mercy and whatnot behind us, and so they're just going to turn around and deal with you guys, and then you're split from the rest of your team. Th this was a very dangerous, risky play. Um, 
you guys probably should not have done. But at least you're staying with your team. Good job getting around the corner. Good job getting back to your team, actually. I am very surprised. Cool. Very surprised you actually managed to get back to your own backline. Um, so. A uh, little thing there, when you notice the target you're healing is antied, either uh, damage boost them or switch targets. Um, because if you have your healing beam on a target that's antied, you are doing absolutely nothing. They cannot receive healing. So you either want to damage boost them, so when the Ryan's swinging, he does more damage and he might be able to kill things. And then if things are dead, he can survive after that. Or if you think that they're just they're dead no matter what you do, find a different target. Find somebody that's not antied, low health. Um, it's a tough situation, but don't heal targets that are full health. Don't heal targets that can't heal. Yeah, so that entire situation, I think it all stemmed from the fact that you guys dropped down into their into their backline instead of retreating to your own. Um, you know, if you guys had retreated back through door here, you know, Reinhardt could have held corner. You could have been like back here through all that and. You know, it would have been would have been a different fight. Whether or not you guys would have won it, I don't know. But uh, a speedy recovery. Fire at will. I wouldn't have used the rap if I was Rosario. I understand it's overtime. You guys are only get the point. But... Just, just die a retreat. Die a retreat. You guys are fighting a losing fight. Heroes never die. So. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's We're to start with this. Um, so let's let's go back twenty seconds. See where that takes us. Okay, blocking out a spot. So right here, you can see they have three on payload. We can see that there are four of them alive. Actually, walking out of spawn, we saw that there were four on payload. So you know that there are at least four of them alive. Right, you only see one kill in the kill feed, um, and that is, I guess, VAP. Um, yeah, so right now, walking out of spawn, the only kill you can see is on our own VAP, so we have to assume that all six enemy team are alive, which they are. Um, and so right now, your Ryan and your Zarya are fighting a two versus six, and your Zarya decides to grab. Sure. I bet you it was a fat grab. I bet you. Let's let's take a look. Oh yeah, look at that. She got uh got three people in there. That's a huge grab. Huge. Right? But look who's here to follow up on it. It's just her. Reinhardt's still back here, so I mean he has to charge in to be able to provide value for this grab. Right? So at this point, when you guys are down four people. They should just be backing out, right? They should not be taking this fight. Zarya should absolutely have not used Grav here. She wasted Grav. But again, that's not on you. You, right here, you have to recognize that this fight is lost, right? And you should be in comms telling your team to back out. Now, I, I've been in Silver. I understand that at this point, if you start telling your pe team to back out and regroup, they're probably going to start raging because, you know, it's overtime and you guys think you can contest. Um, but you can't, right? You cannot fight a 2v6, you cannot fight a 3v6 and expect to win. Um, even fighting a 5v6 should not be expecting to win that fight, right? It, it's a simple as numbers game. If they have more people than you, they have the advantage. They have the better chance at winning, unless you have, like, some sick nanoblade combo coming in or something like that. You should back out, regroup, and take fights as 6. Again, you guys pushed it all the way to the end. It's overtime. You know, it doesn't matter if you stop them at this point or the second point or just before third. What matters is that you stop them. 
And if you start trickling in now, you're going to stagger yourselves. And they're going to have this snowball effect where because you keep on trickling in one, two, or three people at a time, and they have six people, well, they're just going to keep winning those fights. And then, you know, another three of you are going to come in, and it's a 3v6, and they're going to win that fight. And by the time you guys die, those first three will have respawned, and it's just this weird snowball trickle effect. Right? So if you have to give them this point, give them this point. It does not matter. Right? What matters is you guys regroup as a full team of six and re-engage as a full team of six. Right? Because that way in that 6v6 fight, you have the best odds at winning. And so in this kind of situation, you know, Azaria wasted grab. Absolutely wasted grab. Right? And then you come in. See, Reinhardt dies. No. Right there. So when your Reinhardt and your Zarya die, at that point, just back out. Like, you should be telling your Junkrat, nope, nope, nope. Like, you guys can't 1v6, you can't 2v6. Like, this is not something that you can, that you can win. Right? It's just, it's, it's not something that can happen. And then you pop off. And so you waste Valkyrie after your Junkrat dies. So again, you're fighting 2v6, and you wasted your ultimate. So you were putting all these resources into a losing fight. Um, and on payload maps, that's not something like that. Okay, and then oh, this res. So, another thing you have to think about is, yes, you have res, it's off cooldown, that doesn't mean you have to use it, right? This is a losing fight, as I've been explaining for the past couple of minutes here. Um, and so by resing your Zarya, all you're doing is giving the enemy team 400 more points of uh, ult charge, right? Because she has 400 health, so she is going to die again, right? So by you resing her here, you are just giving the enemy team more ultimate charge, right? You resing Zarya is not going to be the key to winning this fight. Zarya is not going to help you win this fight. I understand, you know, where your mindset is at, but... At this point, you know, the fight is well beyond gone and lost. And so by adding another body into here, all you're doing is delaying things. You're delaying the cart a little bit, and you're further staggering yourselves, and then you're just giving them more ultimate charge. But again, this is... That kind of mentality is, is pretty standard for silver players. You know, they... I, I mean, the one good thing that came out of this is that you drew a Shatter and Blade. Drew out Shatter and Blade, so that's the only good thing about it. Let's see if you're what here. John Crash should be backing the fuck up. Crack got out somehow, and now you guys are regrouped. Okay, so this is good. You guys are pretty much all regrouped, um, and you're ready to push back in as a six, as a full team again. Crack's a really good target's damage boost. Be careful, the widow. So, right there, you know they have a widow. You saw her standing up here. Um, Mercy's voice line, be careful the sniper, right? So I would have stayed in this corner here and then like just damage boost to Junkrat. Junkrat should not be even standing here because by the time you hit gold, the widows are gonna be able to hit this shot, no problem. So stand here, damage boost him, and you should be telling Junkrat to get the hell out of here. Um, you know, and kind of just keep an eye on that door, because the other thing that can happen is the widow can jump in here and shoot you. So if you see that widow, that's your get out. But you do get out of that room, which is good, but then you sit in the open here for a bit, and again, higher higher ranks, that Widow is just going to kill you. So, if this Widow wasn't here, right, pretend this Widow wasn't here, Junkrat's in a good spot, sit in here and damage boost the Junkrat. They don't have anybody that can reach you when you're in here, so you're perfectly safe, you're giving uh, Junkrat more means to do more damage, and this would be a good play. But because they have a Widow, because where that Widow is positioned, you and Junkrat are both in a bad spot here, right? So 
what I would be doing is pretty much exactly what you did, is you get out and just drop down and try to get behind a corner as quickly as possible. Try and separate yourself from Widow's sight lines. Again, just drop. Don't glide down. You want to get behind safety as quickly as possible. Damage boost right through the shell. So, back a little bit. So you're healing, 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 that's all good. Hide around the corner. Uh, see, I like that little play, right? You realize where the danger was, so you kind of went around this forklifter and using this as cover. That was good. Healing your Anna, which is good. So now your Anna has healed both herself and Ryan up to full health. Ryan has just landed a massive shatter and is YOLO charging into it. Anna's at full health, so your heal beam is doing nothing. Uh, go to your Ryan and damage boost him through this. And then if you were, so if you were also damage boosting Ryan, you know, you probably could have been right here and avoided that diva bomb, but I mean, Genji was also here, killed you guys. So it was a tough situation. You know, your team was already in a losing fight and your Ryan landed a big shatter. Um, again, damage boosting Ryan might've been able to secure one kill. Um, I think that fight was lost anyway because, you know, Junkrat and Zarya got picked off pretty early. But uh, Junkrat just died now to the Genji. Surprised he died against the Widow. It seems to me, so far as I'm watching this, you're basically forgetting that Widow has a damage Back boost beam. Spent a lot of time healing full health targets. I've seen you do the Mercy Surge Super Jump. Uh, one thing that I haven't seen you do is the Bunny Hop. And I don't know if you know what that is. Basically, when you're, if you just hit Shift and Guardian Angel over to a target, and you hit Space, as you kind of um, fly over them, so kind of in the same, um, at the same time you would hit Space with uh, with Miss, uh, Mercy Super Jump, it will glide over top of them. And so right there, when you were right over here, and you're flying to your Zarya. Um, I would have bunny hopped over top of her, and then you would have round up by dumpster here, right? And then this way, you are closer to your own spawn, closer to your own team, or behind cover. Because right here, you are wide out in the open, right? You've got Genji bearing down on you. You know they have a widow, and so um, I think their widow might be dead. I don't see her here, but you know their their widow is going to be looking down these sight lines, so. Always respect the Widow, always respect the enemy DPS, always try to find some cover. Right, so right here, again, you're just, you're in a bad position. I get that you're trying to help your team, but your team should be backing up, right? They don't want to take this fight here because you were right outside the enemy team spawn. So you guys should be backing up to regroup with your Ryan. You should be backing up to hold around this corner. Um, as a team, that's what you should be doing. As Mercy, you are out in the open. Find yourself some cover, play around a corner or something. Stand out in the open. Okay. So. Again, you're trying to uh, 1v1 a Genji. Uh, right there, I guess it wasn't the worst idea because your only other option was be to damage boost your Ana. I mean, she has uh, just about the same chances of hitting uh, Genji as you do. But, you know, your Reinhardt's right with you, or he was almost there, and um, Zarya and Junkrat are pushing into the enemy team here. So you didn't really have a lot of options there, but trying to 1v1 at Genji is usually never a good idea, um, because you are almost never going to win that fight. But one thing to do, when Anna sleeps a target like that, don't wake them up. Just especially because your Reinhardt's right there, so you can let Reinhardt charge him and just clean up that kill, right? Or if you don't have a Reinhardt right there, whoever's with you, just count down, like, three, two, one, and then you just pump damage into the to the sleeping target, right? So what Anna can do there is Anna can shoot a nade right into her little... Or Anna actually has a combo that can kill a sleeping target who is at full health, or 190 health, because sleep dart does 10 damage, I think. Um, so Anna can technically do that by herself, but Genji has two escapes, so 
basically, if Anna sleeps somebody, try to coordinate with your team to secure that kill, because that person should die. Right? So right there, because you shoot him early, Genji's able to get out. If you had just let him sleep for half a second longer, your Reinhardt could have charged him, your Reinhardt could have swung on him, fire striked him, you could have secured that kill, that like Genji would have died. Killing to a half target again. So... Again, that was a risky Guardian Angel. I know you were trying to help your Widow, but you also know that Genji is up here. And much like a Widow, you have to respect Genjis. Because again, Genjis have a combo that can one-hit you. So, well, again, in Silver, I don't think they can do that reliably, but Gold, Platinum, they most certainly can. It was a risky jump to jump right. Again, I know you're trying to help him, but you are taking these very high-risk plays for potentially little benefit. Um, so right now you're being targeted by Widow. The little crouch dancing there is good. Uh, most Widows are going to try to aim for the head, so crouch a little bit, you might actually be able to dodge a headshot. So, I mean, I think your team was trying to chase down a kill there, which is fine, but you guys are now, like, fighting in their spawn. Damage was insane. I am even stronger. I am ready. I'm taking care of you. Walk off. The Widow's still up there, be careful. Enemy. Nanaku said minister. Let's get you back. Target, because they're anti-damage with somebody. 60 seconds. Yeah, I'm okay with this. I was an okay path. Team fight started, so it's, it's good value. So, you probably know what I'm going to say here. You kind of got stuck on the D.Va here, and instead of dropping down and flying back to your team, you decided to shoot the, the back of the D.Va. You don't do enough damage to reliably kill D.Va. Uh, you probably could have saved your Junkrat there. Um, although it looks like you're going to get the res off. You know, you, again, you will provide more value to your team if you focus on damage boosting than shooting, right? Think about it this way. Um, when you're in alt, especially, your beam chains to everybody within a certain radius, right? So if you damage boost one person, everybody in this area is going to be damage boosted, right? So you're providing 30% damage boost to when you're Junkrat, your Reinhardt, and your Zarya. Right, and all of a sudden, these guys are now doing 30% more damage, all of whom do more damage than you do at the start. And now all of them are doing even more damage, right? Which is just far more value. You are being far more effective as a support than if you're sitting there shooting the back of a diva with your pistol. Ten seconds remain. Don't let up. It's almost over. Let's get you that out there. Healing a full health target in the right heart there. He's full health. Damage boost him, damage boost him. No one can hide. Again, they're, you know. Let's get you that out there. So you're healing, which is fine. Keeping Anna alive, which is good. You know, you always want to pay attention to your other support. So that's fine. I'm okay with that. Uh, but when she gets back up to full health, switch over and start damage boosting her Junkrat. Because he's lobbing damage down there. 
you know, your Reinhardt's here at full health, so you don't need to worry about that. And then there, you know, you turn to look at your Reinhardt too, because he's being focused, which is good. But again, he still has armor, so you can damage boost him through that, right? Um, yeah, you know what, Winston is tickling him, but there, Winston is being damage boosted. Right? Uh, so you cannot outheal the damage that Winston is doing. So now you and Anna together, possibly. But your better bet is to try and get Reinhardt to kill Winston before Winston kills Reinhardt. Which can definitely happen, because Reinhardt does so much more damage than Winston does. And because your Anna's already focusing on keeping your Reinhardt alive, and because your Reinhardt gets bubbled. Right, so when he's bubbled, he can't take damage. Your Anna's healing him, and he's already at very high health. The damage boost his swings, right? I bet you if he damage boosted his swings from the start, you might have been able to kill this Winston. No one can hide. I will hide. Fire at will. Damage boost. Especially into a shatter or a grav, you know, when they're all like that, just it doesn't matter if your people you guys are getting on low health. Just damage boost the Reinhardt. Um, especially into a grav, because uh Reinhardt hits everybody in the arc of the hammer. So if you have a three or four man grav, Reinhardt's hitting every single one of those per um people in the grav with his hammer per swing. Just damage boost him through it. It doesn't matter if one of your team dies. Um in that case, because if you manage to kill all three or all four of them that are in the grav, it's an easy trade-off. Okay. Victory. So, bit of a weird game. You know, um, I, I will say, in terms of a VOD review, it's not the greatest uh, type of video you want to send in to get reviewed, because... I mean, for one thing, you guys kind of rolled them. You know, the the enemy team won, I think, two team fights that entire game. Um, generally speaking, when you submit a VOD for a VOD review, the best ones that you want to submit are the games where you think you played really well, but you still lost. You know, where you think you were very effective, but you still weren't able to secure the win despite your best efforts. Um, and again, here, like I said, you know, you guys kind of rolled the enemy team. Um, but the biggest things that I saw from this gameplay are that you forget Mercy has a right click, right? You forget Mercy has a damage boost. So this goes for all supports, but all supports are not just heal bots. Your other supports always have something else in their kit that you need to utilize to make the most out of the situation, to make the most out of that hero. Um, and so you spend a lot of time healing when that time could be better spent damage boosting, especially when you have an Ana or a Baptiste or another support that is considered a main healer or a primary support. Um, when you have that, Mercy is often considered the flex support, and so her job is to use her secondary abilities to help enable her team. Um, you do spend a lot of time, again, trying to heal full health targets. Again, damage boost, damage boost, damage boost. Um, Mercy does 30% boost to all damage, or primary fire, whatever it is. That is a huge amount of damage. Never underestimate that. Um, there were also quite a few times where I pointed out in the video where you decided to take out your pistol and shoot, rather than damage boost or heal a team teammate. Um, Mercy doesn't do enough damage reliably for you to justify her pistol in many cases. Um, most of the time, you're better off damage boosting a tank or a DPS that's near you to try and secure that kill, rather than you trying to secure that kill yourself. Um, other than that, so yeah, biggest thing, don't forget Mercy has damage boost. I think if you start incorporating that damage boost into your play, you know, recognizing that target's at full health so I can start damage boosting him instead, um, I think you'll start to climb. Uh, secondary things... Make sure you respect the enemy team's DPS, you know, especially if they have a Widow or a Genji or, you know, even their Winstons, because uh, you are a good target for those heroes. Play around corners, try not to be out in the open as much. Um, tend to make some pretty risky jumps to try and save teammates. Don't put yourself in a bad situation to save a teammate unless you know that you can get support or unless you know you can get away from it. Um, so just don't forget she has damage boost and play a little bit safer. I think you can climb. Well done.